This is Michael Popak, Legal AF, with new and breaking news on some sentencing for Jan 6 defendants. Well, Daniel Lee Judd is the beneficiary of drawing a MAGA Trump judge, Trevor McFadden, appointed by Donald Trump after a stint in the Trump Department of Justice. Trevor McFadden, you may remember, is the same judge who foot dragged his way through the release of Trump's tax returns that were sought by the House Ways and Means Committee, and that just got released just at the very end of their tenure before the new Congress came in, and that, of course, was done intentionally. But McFadden has been battling it out with the Department of Justice on a regular basis every time he has a sentencing of these Jan 6 insurrectionists. He convicts them. He sides with the Department of Justice primarily and and uh, in a majority way on convictions, um, but he pulls back on throwing the book at the Jan 6 insurrectionists every time he has one in front of them, and he tries to find a way to give them the lowest sentence possible under the sentencing guidelines, not the highest sentence possible, and for good measure, criticizes the Department of Justice for what he sees as playing favoritism and being too harsh with the Jan 6 insurrectionists when they're not as harsh, in this judge's view, on like the Black Lives Matter protesters and rioters and people um, who got out of hand in that round of protest and destroyed property or, or threatened the police. And McFadden seems some sort of moral equivalency between the riots two summers ago or the protests that got out of hand two summers ago, and the Jan 6th insurrectionist who tried to hang and kill and assassinate Rep House of Representatives and Senators to stop the peaceful transfer of power. I don't see that moral equivalency. I don't see that legal equivalency, but it animates Judge McFadden every time he's got the Department of Justice in front of him for sentencing and the beneficiary Who's, who gets as proxy, gets leniency because McFadden wants to make a show of it and wants to embarrass the Department of Justice is Daniel Lee Judd, age 36, out of North Texas, who was one of at least nine insurrectionists to, that did battle hand-to-hand -hand combat with police at the Lower West Terrace Tunnel, a series of glass doors off of the inaugural platform and entrance that if you broke through that, if bad people broke through that, would be an automatic in into the Capitol. So of course, the lines of police there um, were protecting those doors. And for almost an hour, Daniel Lee Judd and at least nine other people and three that he was working with constantly grappled and battled the police in hand-to-hand -hand combat to try to give, as the Department of Justice even referred to it, the heave-ho to the police, get them out of the way, keep making runs at them to break through those doors and get into the Capitol. Daniel Lee Judd not only participated in some of the most violent attacks on police um, that, that was located here at the Lower West Terrace Tunnel, where this battle took place, but he even he even had the bright idea to take an incendiary device. So I've seen it reported as a firecracker or a smoke bomb or whatever it was and throw it at the police. Well, whatever it was, he thought it was something that was going to cause massive destruction because there's video of him running away after he threw it. And then returning to the scene after the police had success, successfully after um, 40 or 50 minutes, cleared the tunnel, and a new line of police came in. He went back, McFadden, and battled again. And even the judge in sentencing said that this was the most shocking and violent confrontation of protesters, rioters, insurrectionists, and the police that had happened. He agreed with the Department of Justice on that. He agreed with the Department of Justice that it was a flagrant affront to our system of government. But when it came to going along with the Department of Justice's recommendation on sentencing for Mr. McFadden, he basically cut it by two thirds. The, the Department of Justice ran the numbers under the sentencing guidelines, the federal sentencing guidelines, which judges use, which is a series of charts and graphs that, that um, judges use as ultimately guidelines, but they're almost mandatory, to line up crimes, the person, their 
criminal history, if any. And then there's enhancements, meaning let's raise the total number of months in jail. And there's departures, which is the ability for the judge to exercise some discretion. Every time McFadden has one of these Jan 6 insurrections in front of him, even the ones that in his own courtroom were convicted, he finds a way to give them a downward departure and less than what was required. The Department of Justice ran the math for the judge and gave him all the enhancements that would apply, including a terrorism enhancement, because what's a better version of terrorism than throwing an incendiary device at the police and battling and grappling with them time and time again to try to break into the Capitol? That's not terrorism. I don't know what is. But the judge said, I don't like this 90 months recommendation you're making the Department of Justice. Let's go with 32 months. To come up with the 32-month sentence, the judge not only had to run the numbers and remove the terrorism enhancement factor that the Department of Justice was offering, but he even used his own discretion to give a downward departure um, and lowered it another five months as a stick in the eye and a finger in the eye in the Department of Justice, who he is on record, this Judge McFadden, as saying both in this sentencing and in a prior sentencing— in a prior sentencing of uh, Jenny Cudd, C-U-D-D, she, he said, the Department of Justice would have more credibility in my courtroom or overall if they were more even-handed and fair in how they were prosecuting cases, constantly referring as a, some sort of equivalency to the BLM movement and protests and other things that, that arose out of that. And um, so every time he has the opportunity, this is one of probably one judge in the D.C. circuit, a primarily progressive liberal-leaning circuit, who um, doesn't follow Department of Justice, cuts their recommendations in half, and who benefits from it? You know, terrorists and insurrectionists that should be breaking big rocks into small rocks at like Leavenworth or wherever for the rest of their life for what they did on Jan 6th. And now let's take a quick break to talk about our next partner, Z-Biotics. You ever skip a workout because of drinks the night before? Well, me too. If you're committed to your healthy routine this year, you need Z-Biotics. Z-Biotics Pre-Alcohol Probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. So here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics it produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut where you need it the most. Just remember to drink Zbiotics before drinking alcohol. Drink responsibly and get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. The first time I tried Zbiotics was on vacation with my wife. You know, as instructed, I drank a bottle of Zbiotics before any alcohol, and I was amazed at how good I felt the next day. Give Zbiotics a try for yourself. Go to zbiotics.com slash legal AF to get 15% off your first order when you use legal AF at checkout. Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, head to zbiotics.com slash legal AF and use code legal AF at checkout for 15% off. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this. And now back to the video. The other interesting thing about McFadden is that in the very uh, uh, part of the um, sentencing where he could make some his own observations, he said two things about, about um, uh, Daniel Lee Judd. One, there wasn't enough pre-planning. Daniel Lee Judd went to the ellipse and listened to this quote-unquote speech, what some people call speech, what I call lighting the fuse, loading the cannon, and firing it at the Capitol, which is what Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani, John Eastman, and others that day did. And he, but but instead of seeing that as a problem and as an act of a terrorist, McFadden, Judge McFadden, sees it as an excuse or a defense to lower the sentence, basically saying, um, and this I thought this went out the window in the Nuremberg trials when the Nazis were caught and prosecuted in Israel, but basically saying, well, Judd was just following orders. He was just following the urgings of his president. So now we got, let's think about that. This many layered observation by Judge McFadden. One is that 
um, Donald Trump is partially, if not totally responsible for egging on and fomenting discontent and fomenting this rabble to turn into an insurrectionist mob and try to loot, assassinate, and burn down the Capitol. Which, of course, opens the door, not at sentencing, but in the continued prosecution and defenses of this case, where the uh, crib- the criminal defendants want to argue, Donald Trump, like in the Proud Boys, let's bring Donald Trump in. He told me to do it. I was just following orders. See, I never thought I was just following orders was ever a defense to a crime. Learn that in law school, learn that in life, learn that in history. But to Judge McFadden, he... This guy that's before me now didn't pre-plan and he was following his president. And therefore, I'm going to cut a sentence even below the lowest possible sentence I can give him. I'm going to shave off another five months just because. Just because I want to send the message to the Department of Justice that I'm the sheriff in this courtroom and I set the sentencing. Now, some people at home might be thinking during this hot take, what can the Department of Justice do about it? Well, there's a couple of takeaways for them as well. The first takeaway is they're not doing well, the Department of Justice, in getting the terrorism enhancement to increase the uh, the, uh, uh, months in prison. It's two separate judges, including one that's reasonably progressive, um, uh, Dabney Friedberg. She didn't go along with it either and didn't give the terrorist enhancement. And one of the reasons is the terrorism enhancement really just throws the whole game board over and, and increases the possible amount of time in prison to 15 years. So they're working back from a very high number and the judges don't want to quite go that far. You know, we've seen some of the highest sentencing be 60 months, 70 months, 90 months, but we haven't seen the, you know, 157 months, 222 months that we see in some money laundering drug cases. You know, we may see in the FTX case on Sam Bankman Freed, that type of thing. You know, uh, Bernie Madoff, you know, 90 years in prison, we may think, and I agree, that these the judges shouldn't give them any leniency at all and should give them at the highest level that the sentencing guidelines recommend and even do an upward departure. But that's not what they're doing. So one takeaway, Department of Justice, you're not doing great with the terrorism enhancement. Either you have to do a better job in presenting the evidence during the trial in order to get that. And now that you've lost twice before two different judges on the opposite sides of the political spectrum, there is a way for them to improve the presentation of the evidence during the trial. And I think they will do that or or they really need to drop going for the terrorism enhancement because it may be, it may be that because they're throwing that out there, they're flashing that card, it's leading some judges to go actually in the opposite direction and be more lenient. So that's one, that's one takeaway. And the second takeaway is, they've got a judge who is not in their corner and is not in the corner of justice and is not in the corner of democracy and is not going to side with them at all and cut them a break. Not a judge who not only criticized the Department of Justice, but criticized Merrick Garland, both when he sentenced um, both when he sentenced the uh, a prior um, insurrectionist and gave her a break. Uh, and I'll, you know, even in her, even in her um, uh, probation requirements, allowed her to have a firearm, even though she was a five-time felon. This Jenny Cud, he's going to do the same thing here. So they have to also adapt as the Department of Justice and realize that if they they pull McFadden as their judge. They're going to have to do a bigger and better job at presenting the evidence at trial because they can't count on the sentencing report to bring it home and get them the highest level of sentence, right? It's not enough to get a conviction, although the Department of Justice is doing remarkable in that arena. They have to also get the highest sentence possible and get judges to agree with it. Now, the good news is there are you know over a dozen or, or more judges, of course, in the D.C. Circuit, and almost all of them, except for like McFadden, is siding with the Department of Justice, and they're doing really well, both in convictions and in uh, pretrial rulings and in sentencing. But we got a McFadden problem, and the Department of Justice needs to stay on top of it. I will stay on top of all things related to Jan 6 and things that are at the intersection of law and politics. I do hot takes almost every day, and when I'm not doing those and practicing law as a national trial attorney. I also co-anchor a podcast on Wednesdays and Saturdays on the Midas Touch Network called Legal AF. And it is news 
on the legal spectrum, on the political spectrum. We do it twice a week. And in between, my co-anchor, Ben Mysalis, founder of Midas, and myself, and a, and a third anchor, Karen Friedman Ignifolo, formerly a prosecutor, we do shows just like this. But I do these hot takes. And if you like what you're hearing, follow me at at MS Popak, wherever you get your social media. And you can follow Legal AF on every place that you get your podcast from Google, Spotify, Apple, and the like. Michael Popak reporting. Our blue wall stopped the red wave and election deniers got denied election. That's why we're celebrating with the new Democracy Prevails team. We've got lots of work to do, but we should all be proud that when democracy was tested, democracy prevailed. You've earned this. Don't wait. Get yours right now at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.